We're bringing back a popular format with today's video, which will be in the form of a quiz on an obstacle departure procedure. This is the Provo 4 at a Provo Municipal Airport in Utah. Let's have a look at the takeoff minimum section for the first question. The ceiling is 1000 AGL with 5 miles of visibility in the Windsor Calm. You plan to use runway 31. A look at the POH for your beach bonanza shows that at VX of 95 knots, you should be able to maintain at least a 700 feet per minute climb. Can you use this departure procedure regardless of if you're flying under part 91 or 135? Yes, your climb rate of 700 is greater than the required 380 feet per nautical mile for this runway. Yes, your climb gradient is greater than the required 380 feet per nautical mile. No, you can't make the required climb gradient. Or yes, but only because you can climb in visual conditions. We'll put up a timer and give you a few seconds. We can do this procedure because the climb gradient is greater than the required 380 feet per nautical mile. Since we can make that, we can take off with standard minimums, which is one statute mile visibility. Our POH says that at 95 knots, we should make at least 700 feet per minute in the climb. We need to convert feet per minute to feet per nautical mile. To do so, we take 700 and divide it by the result of our ground speed and 60. With no wind, our ground speed is 95. Divided by 60, that's 1.583. 700 divided by 1.583 is about 442 feet per nautical mile. This is greater than the required gradient of 380. Note that we can't take off and climb in visual conditions because the required ceiling for that is 3,100 feet, which we don't have. For the next question, let's say the 1,000 foot ceiling is below your personal minimums. So you wait for it to rise to 3,500 AGL with clear visibility. But the temperature has increased, and you're not sure you can make the climb gradient for the runway anymore. What's the best course of action? Use runway 18. The lower climb gradient requirement is surely easier to make for you. Wait for temps to drop again. Stay on runway 31 and climb over the field in visual conditions and join the 311 radial from Provo after leaving 7,400 feet. Or stay on runway 31 and climb over the field in visual conditions and join the 311 radial from Provo after leaving 9,000 feet. We should stay on runway 31 and climb over the field in visual conditions, joining the 311 radial from Provo after leaving 7,400 feet. Runway 31 has the option to climb over the airport in visual conditions as long as the ceilings and visibility are better than 3,100 feet and 3 miles. This requires us to climb to 7,400 and then depart from the field along the 311 radial from Provo, continuing the rest of the procedure as we climb to 9,000. Note that we could use runway 1A, but the required climb is not much lower than that for 31. So if there's a doubt about making 31, we might have the same doubt about 1A. For the next question, let's say we've departed 31 and have started the procedure. We've not received our clearance along our filed route by the time we approach the Fairfield VOR from the PAM E fix on the procedure. How should we enter the hold? Direct, teardrop, or parallel? It should be a parallel entry. The inbound course in the hold is 340 with right turns. We're approaching on a 210 heading. A parallel entry is best. Now the wind is out of the west. When flying inbound in the hold, our heading is 335. What heading should we fly on the outbound leg? 160, 165, 175, or 145? It's 175. The rule for holds is that we need to take our correction from the inbound leg, which is 5 degrees left, and triple it on the outbound leg, so 15 degrees right. Turning 15 degrees right from the 160 outbound course gives us a heading of 175 degrees. This triple correction compensates for wind drift from the outbound leg as well as the two turning legs where no drift correction is made because we're sticking with standard rate turns. These weren't easy, but how did you do? Let us all know in the comments, and don't forget to head over to the Flight Insight website linked here and in the description for more training and to check out our ground schools today.